Okay. I'm laying this out. The ground cover is going to extend on the outside of the greenhouse to keep weeds down. So what I'm planning to do is cut a slot. Let me back up so you can see. I'm going to cut a slot. Approximately two feet in on each side on this line, right where these posts are, so that I can slide this down over top of it and have it lay on the other side of the greenhouse. Right, as you can see, there's two sides to this fabric there's the hem side on this side, and then there's a finished side on this side. That's the side I want up. So I've cut the uh, slots, slats on that side, or slots, whatever you want to call it, and uh, I'm going to start pulling it over the ground posts. Forgot I gotta cut out a spot for my water line down here. Now what we hold this ground cover or fabric, weed fabric, whatever you want to call it, greenhouse floor down with to these sod pins. And uh, this is what they look like. And just hammer them straight down. They say to space them, I called, it says space them about four feet apart. And uh, that should do it, so. That's what I'm going to do. Alright, one of the things I forgot. You want to make sure you kind of fold this under. When you start, because this is a, this is not a hemmed um, side. So you want to fold that down at least an inch or two. Before we start pounding those in the ground. And as I suspected, this ground's so hard, I'm going to end up tearing these things up.
If you have stubborn ground like this, just take your time. And I'm going to work my way up. I'm sorry, you didn't see that. I've gone across that way. Went about every two feet. I'll go out every four feet this way. Yeah. I finished up two of the three 100 foot links. You can barely see it if you can at all. I'll pick it back up tomorrow. Okay, tubers. I know I was showing you how I was going to go every four feet or whatever. I actually went every about every two feet with the pins all the way down on both sides and I did the same in the middle uh, every two feet all the way down and the, the, there's three sections of, of uh, fabric here they're each about a hundred feet long you see that one it was a little excess so I'll be folding that under to make it even here but I've also got to um, roll all this back and drill my holes I will have six holes for the end wall here uh, but I, I haven't I have it hanging over this side about eh, 15 inches or so two feet on that side 15 inches on this side and it overlaps a little better than the foot in on each of the sections in the middle but the floor is down and I'm ready to start with the bows and the hat base you'll see I have the hat base already sitting up over there getting ready to start uh, running those that runs flush with the ground we want to make sure that's good and seated with the ground because that is going to keep everything out as far as the bugs, the wind, the air, that's going to kind of be my baseboard, so to speak. Enough of that. I'll show you what we're doing with the end wall or the bows. All right, tubers. Now this kind of overgrown a little bit here, but you can see what I've got. These are your center pieces. This is the top. This will become that will become the top of the uh, greenhouse, and those bows right there will go on either side of that, and uh, they'll take one tech screw, and I'll show you where that goes. In just a second. Okay, I hope you can see this. This is tapered on this end, the male end. It slides in, into the um, center um, piece because it's a little bigger. It's, a, it's actually made to fit together just like this. Make sure they're good and snug. And it'll take one tech screw on the inside of the female piece about an inch or so up all it's meant to do according to the uh, the text at Atlas all it's there to do is just to hold it together while you're standing it up uh, it's not really meant for a lot of support you'll look in the instructions and it says to put two in there and uh, they said it's not necessary and I agree it's not necessary if that's all it's for to stand it up uh, you'll be good with just one and these are tech screws this is the 14 one tech screw. Let's see if I can get a picture of that. It's got like a little drill bit on the top of it. And that's what you use to put through that piece right there. Make sure it's on the inside. You don't want it on the outside of the bow because that's where the plastic's gonna sit. You want it on the inside 
of the side of the bow. So just off center as it's laying flat. jerk so be careful once it's flush that drill will jerk on you and we'll go do the other side over here Here you can see that we have the male end, which is on the bow. The female end is on the center. You need to make sure that all this is laid out as flat as possible because when you stand it up, you don't want it, you know, kind of teetering on you. You want it nice and flat so that it's a, a nice, uh, firm, solid bow and it's not all tweaked on you. Put them together as flush as you can get it. Take your tech screw. It's a 14-1 tech screw, one inch, one and a half inches up, off center, just to the inside of the boat. You see I have four of them done. That means I have 21 to go. 11 of those will have trusses attached to it. And that's the next thing I'll show you. We're going to attach the trusses while they're flat on the ground instead of waiting and putting them up uh, onto the bows when they're hanging. According to Terry from Atlas, that is a much better way to do it. It's a little harder to stand them up, but it's a lot easier in the long run. For this next part, we're going to uh, add the trusses to the bows. And I'm just going to show you, these are the. this is the bag that the tech screws come in. This is the 14. Uh, one inch size 14 by one inch screws tech screws those are what we've been using on the bows what we've been using and this box is uh, all the fasteners let me see it says on the box two inch brace bands with bolts and nuts and one and five eighths inch brace bands and it has a number on here of uh, 78 and 22 and if you open that up you'll see it's got those are the one and five eighths inch bands these are all the two inch bands the bolts for the two inch are here and the bolts for the one and five eighths inch are there and they take a half inch um, socket from what I see, it looks like you would want a deep well socket uh, to tighten all this up. So I've got a couple of tools here that I, I'll be using. I take the band apart. This has got bands on it. It comes with, it's already pre-assembled to a degree. Uh, and it's got bands holding it all together. So that's the first step. I'm going to cut all that apart.
All right. Okay. Uh, you'll see there's a 1T there. That's for the truss. It's pre-marked on the bow, and that's where the end of the truss will be. The 1P is for the first purlin. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, and hook that up. I don't know if you can see it. It's out of focus. Um, with a 2-inch band. You gotta bolt, you gotta pull these apart a little bit and slide it on. The one and five eighths inch goes on your truss. And those are going to go together to form an anchor. All right, here's your two inch. When you put these together at that junction there, you don't want to do it like this. You don't want them that to go on the inside, and you don't want it to go on the outside. You want it to go like this. That's the proper way to do it according to the instructions. The other thing I wanted to show you is when the one and five eighths is attached to the the truss right here. This two inch is attached to the bow. They're going to line up like this. You notice that there's a square hole. This bolt has a square head that will hold it still as you. Uh, Tighten it up onto this nut. I think you get the point anyway. Like so. And that holds it all together. And you'll use a half inch socket or wrench on this to tighten it all down. I'm going to go get a uh, uh, pair of vice grips to help me out with this. And my bride helped me stand up uh, one of these uh, bows with the truss on it. And you can see it came loose over here, which was a good thing. Um, how we were trying, we are struggling to get the bow bent because um, it actually sticks quite a bit. Uh, maybe a foot and a half, two feet out farther than the posts do. And part of the strength of the the arches and the bows is the fact that they're kind of in a spring state, uh, which means you have, to, you have to push them in. They'll actually spring out. So you have to push them in to get them into the hole and get everything lined up. And when that came loose, we were able to actually bend it in because the that, that keeps it too uh, stiff up here. 
and doesn't allow you to uh, to actually move and bow the arch like you should. Uh, all of these um, connections are loose, but uh, it wasn't moving properly until that came loose. And then, so now you'll see I am assembling them with that loose. I will not uh, uh, tighten that up, and in fact, connect that at all uh, until it's stood up. Everything, is, the only tight bolts are the very first ones. I've tightened down that connection there on all of these, and uh, the rest of it should be uh, able to move. Uh, there's there's no easy way really to get this one going either. Uh, that's a lot of uh, that clamp is is pretty stiff each one of those, and when you put them together and try and get that, I think if they had designed that with a longer bolt, it would have been better.
Now we're doing hat base. Fourteen one screws. Whoops. <laughs> It'll go into that pole at the top and the bottom of each pole uh, and overlap three inches. All right, tubers. Hat base on this side is done. Uh, there's a couple of spots I still have to go along and hit the bottom screw. Um, I missed a few intentionally because I'm running out of daylight. Uh, I want to give you this video. We'll do the other side just like this. That's hat base and bows and flooring and an int introduction to my gal hey <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all god bless go plant some dirt some dirt and we'll just well you tell them we'll see you next time we'll see you next time toodles <laughs>